Hi, I'm Alex Oline. And a few months ago, I received a handwritten letter in the mail from a reader. And I was thrilled, of course, as I always am when I hear from readers. I sometimes get emails or Facebook messages, but to have actually moved someone so much that they took the time to sit down and write me a letter by hand, that felt like a real accomplishment. So I was very excited, and I opened it up, and I found words to this effect. Dear Miss Oline, I recently read your novel Inside, and I'd like to know, why is your book so depressing? <laughs> the letter writer went on to list all the unhappy things contained in my novel. <laughs> Mental illness, divorce, suicide, genocide, sexual assault, etc. I swear it's not as bleak as it sounds. But the letter writer, who was a sweet person, seemed uh, less distraught over the existence of these things in the world than concerned for my own mental health. I hope you are aware, the letter concluded, that there are happy things in life. <laughs> Perhaps you should write about those someday. I was flustered by the letter, although probably I shouldn't have been, because to be honest, it's not the first time I've received this kind of reaction. At the end of one of my first major interviews with a magazine, the reporter closed her notebook and said, you know, it's funny, your characters are so unhappy, but you seem like such a happy person. And then there was the time that I visited a book club with my first book, and I asked what questions people had, and a woman put up her hand and said, your main character, she's so sad and so brittle. I didn't like that. That was her whole question. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, you're probably wondering why I keep writing at all, inflicting these stories on people and getting these kind of responses back. And there's something about these comments that seems to imply that it's somehow unseemly to write about unhappy topics or unhappy people. It's as though people keep saying to me, what's a nice girl like you doing in a dark place like this? <laughs> Now, I do take some comfort in the fact that I know that as a writer, I'm not alone in having received these kinds of reactions. I was recently reading about the deluge of letters received by the New Yorker magazine after they published Shirley Jackson's story, The Lottery, which is about a ritual stoning in a small New England town. The magazine was flooded by letters uh, from people who wanted to cancel their subscriptions, although a few people, it must be said, uh, just wanted to know whether such ritual stonings were actually occurring and where they could go to watch them. <laughs> but the more typical response came from a woman who wrote, I read this story while soaking in the tub, and by the time I got to the end, I wanted to put my head under water and end it all. <laughs> now, the lottery is, by definition, an extremely unhappy story, and yet now it is also considered a classic of 20th century literature, notwithstanding that poor woman in the bathtub. So we must find something in these stories that have dark, sad, unhappy places at their core. What is it? What is the point of delving into the lives of unhappy people when all of us have problems of our own? Don't we crave escape from unhappiness and not a deeper path into it? Well, I don't know. It seems to me that unhappy is not, in fact, the worst thing for a book to be. It may not even be the worst thing for a person to be. I mean, of course, unhappiness is awful, and I would never mean to downplay the very real cost of some of the terrible things that I've written about. But maybe unhappiness is also important in stories and in our lives because it can serve as an engine for change. It can be the key to self-awareness because it compels us to investigate and construct our definition of happiness in the same way that a sick person thinks deeply and longingly about physical health. We tell ourselves stories in order to live, is the way Joan Didion put it, and that means not crafting easy fictions, but making meaning out of the difficult reality of our lives. If we only told happy stories, then those people who are mired in moments of unhappiness will go through life feeling unrecognized and that much more alone. I don't necessarily believe in literature as therapy or as a healing mechanism, but I do believe that stories should be tools of truth. Otherwise, they aren't stories, but pale comforts, and we see through them pretty quickly. In the past few weeks, I've been rereading the work of Alastair MacLeod, and I was struck by a moment in his short story, The Vastness of the Dark, also about a letter. 
In this story, a young man reads letters written to his father from his grandparents. The grandfather begs his father, who is working far away from home in Idaho at the time, to come home and work with him. You can hear his love for his son and his longing to see him again. But the grandmother sends a short, terse letter to her son that says, don't listen to him. Don't come home. She wants her son to be happy, and so she tries very brusquely to keep her child away from her, presumably at a cost to herself. It seems harsh for a mother, and yet it's perfectly maternal. All of her love and all of her hope for her son, all of her ideas about happiness and unhappiness are crystallized in that letter that is no more than two or three lines long. It's a very tiny moment, and yet to me, it's very moving. All stories, I think, are like that letter, and for that matter, like the letter that I received. Driven by thoughts about unhappiness, they bring us to the how and why of happiness, and they suppose that it does exist and can be found. So to the person who sent that letter stating maybe there are happy things in life and maybe you should write about them someday, I would answer in all honesty that I already am. <laughs>